Hi, I'm Linda Mal, and welcome to Art This Week Bio's Conduit Gallery. This is episode five in a series of interviews we did on the history of Nancy Whitenack and Conduit Gallery. In this fifth episode, we speak with Marty Walker and Nancy about what it was like to run Conduit Gallery in the late 1990s. Marty was the Conduit Gallery assistant at the Main Street space from 96 to 99. She was also there when they opened the Conduit Annex. Now for our interview with Marty and Nancy. Marty, I know you were a student at UT, uh, UNT in uh, the 90s. Um, what were kind of your memories of the art scene, both in Denton while you were in school, but in Dallas as well as in Deep Ellum? Um, well, I would say the majority of what was going on in Dallas seemed to be in, in Deep Ellum. Um, and in, in, in Denton, it seemed uh, incredibly, it was an incredibly charged time. Um, Vernon Fisher had begun teaching a hybrid forms class, and that really um, kicked off uh, just almost a whole new aesthetic, a new way of thinking. Uh, that I think was liberating for anybody that was an interested in art outside of painting or sculpture. So, um, <clears throat> so there was a lot of uh, energy around that and the people that seemed to be really making a lot of, you know, work in that arena um, sort of gravitated towards being in Good Bad Art Collective then at the time. So I would say that most of the energy, yeah, uh, Deep Ellum, uh, there, there weren't a whole lot of galleries. I mean, it seems mm -hmm. like there were like maybe, were at, at contemporary galleries anyway. I think there were only like two, no. There were like, seriously, four like or five, four maybe. or five. Yeah. So how did you um, first meet Nancy? Oh my God. <laughs> I turned her down several times for, a, she wanted me to be a gallery assistant, and um, this was when I was living up in Denton. And <laughs> I don't remember that, but. <laughs> well, I was, I was a painter, I was studying painting, and I really didn't have any, any, any knowledge of the business of art. And, um, to me, as somebody who was like still in grad school or was just finishing up, it was super intimidating. And so I said no, just because I was, I was mostly intimidated. Um, and then she finally asked me, why do you keep turning me down? You know, what, what is, what's your block with this? And I, I just said, you know, I just am really intimidated by the caliber of clientele that, that you know, you probably have. And in my mind, I was thinking like, the, Brit, the British art collectors walking around with a pipe and ooh, isn't this lovely? And you know, that kind of amped up uh, You were not vision prepared in my head. for the collectors who come in that uh, were so clueless about art at all and that really disgusted you. You weren't ready for them. Actually, I, I was, it was a flip side moment. I, it was, I couldn't believe, I was just, yeah. <laughs> uh, I was really um, surprised by that. But even though, uh, but that was my job. You know, when I came to work with her, that was our job was uh, engaging people, talking about the work, um, at a level where they were. And that was something I really liked uh, working with Nancy um, because she's always created this very uh, warm and welcoming environment anywhere she's been. And um, I have a lot of admiration for that. She's um, always been a real sharp, uh, straight shooter. Yeah. Moving into kind of the origins of the annex, um, what, what was your kind of memory of how that idea came along and what was your involvement in the creation of the annex? Um, 
<laughs> well, I think we were both um, sort of wanting to shake things up a little bit and um, Nancy asked me, um, you know, if, if, if I could do anything at the gallery, what, what would I want to do? And I said, well, gosh, I'd really like to, I'd like to curate a show or something. And I don't know how we sort of, you may remember this better than I do. I don't really. You also <clears throat> wanted to clean house. Oh, well, yeah, we had a real storage problem. <laughs> And I think that those things came together. And uh, so we walked around um, the, the, the storage unit that she had was just down the hallway from, from the gallery. And um, so it didn't connect uh, in, for, to the interior. Yeah. Um, so so I, I proposed to her that we return all of the work and, and clean out this this space, which was, I think, like 12 feet by four or five feet. It was kind of an L shape, right? Mm -hmm. And um, she sat with it for a, a bit, and and then, you know, one, she saw it as well. And and I think what what was really exciting to me is it was a way to bring in um, works by emerging artists and be able to show them alongside the major shows. And so they would get exposure from our existing, to, our, to our existing clients. And there wasn't any like major, I mean there wasn't any major commitment as far as like real estate. There was something really, <coughs> excuse me, uh, there was something really low, low, no, low risk as far as like this, this mm -hmm. tiny space that's gonna show either installation works or, or just small works. And, um, and it really, it was very freeing. Um, it was very liberating to yeah. get rid of we couldn't get in the storeroom to begin with. <laughs> it, have, it was so packed. It was so packed it was to the ceiling, useless yeah. Yeah. to begin with, yes. So having, a, uh, I know the first show was Good Bad Art Collective, um, and I know you'd mentioned that earlier that they were um, a group out of UNT, so can you speak to a little bit of your relationship with them and how they kind of uh, came into being, I guess, the inaugural exhibition or installation for the annex space? Well, um, I, I couldn't think of anyone else, and I think it was mainly because the space was so tiny. I mean, it was so small. And so here you like bring in this force of like 15 to 20 people um, that I felt could really max out the space. And so it made sense to invite them uh, to, to do an installation for the inaugural show. And, um, you know, I, I just talked to them and told them the space that we had created, they, you know, that we wanted them to do the inaugural exhibition. And I think on their end, they were really grappling with um, how are we gonna, because they, their whole premise was one, you know, you snooze, you lose, one night only event, you know, event driven exhibitions. And uh, so they had to compromise a little bit on that, but um, as far as, you know, the installation and the collective as a whole, um, I, I, I have to say, to date, it is still one of my favorite exhibitions. <laughs> so lastly, what would be one thing you could tell us about Nancy that we may not know? <laughs> so, Don't go there. See, you might want to put new, a, new, a new tape, card, or, yeah. <laughs> From what year? <laughs> You were afraid of that How question, huh? How much do you want to know? Yeah. 
This is a tough one because if I told you things, they're hilarious, the huh? <laughs> no, you don't want them on tape, but... Um, <clears throat> I lasted, let's see, with my gallery, I lasted <clears throat> eight years. And to go on, on 30 years, I just, I can barely stand, <clears throat> you know, physically stand upright, like visualizing myself in, you know, 30 years with a gallery. And I think it's absolutely incredible that um, there are individuals who have this vision and longevity and commitment, huge commitment um, to not only artists, but their patrons and, and the community. And I think that um, Nancy's been hugely important in the Dallas uh, art community. <laughs> we want to thank Marty and Nancy for speaking with us. You can find more information on the gallery at conduitgallery.com. Look for a link below in the show notes for the full interview. Watch for other episodes about Conduit Gallery over the next few weeks. That's it for Art This Week Bios. Thanks for watching. I still got your polar